Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages, present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits aboard a wrecked spaceship, stranded on a meteor. Through the nose port, they watch an enemy spaceship land. It's me, ship, all right, Commander. Have your ray gun ready, Happy. We'll give him a fight. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're shining some sort of light on us. Wow, what a glare. Don't look at it. Some kind of special ray. Drop to the deck. I can still see the light, even with my eyes shut. It's burning into my brain. Why did Happy? Keep low. Commander, everything's turning black. We can work our way aft get some shielding between us and that ray. It's no use, Commander. I can't move. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Invasion from Tirana. Hey, space patroller, what do you see peering through your periscope? Hi, it can't be too, Phil. I'm spying on the mailbox around the corner. I'm spying on my pals, all of them dropping letters into the box. You know what they're sending away for? The swell Space Patrol periscope? Ah, uh, you bet, Captain. Well, Space Patrollers, you better take a tip from our pal here and send for your Space Patrol periscope today. And I don't want any of you to miss out on the neat fun you can have spying through the eye of your own periscope. That magical mirror that lets you see around corners and trees, over fences and bushes, but nobody can see you. You can see right over the heads of real tall people, too. Because the periscope's 24 inches high and tapered special for wide-angle vision. And you'll like the keen periscope colors, too. Blue, yellow, and red. And don't forget, Captain Tufil, there's a special identification chart of outer space patrol printed right on the periscope and a place for your name, address, and solar system. Yes, it's plenty terrific. So, gang, hurry and send for yours right now. Remember, this is the last time we can offer you the Space Patrol periscope. Send our rice checks or wheat checks box top. Together with your name, address, and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, Invasion from Tirana. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in their star drive spaceship cruising far beyond the orbit of Tirana 15, outermost planet of a remote solar system in the constellation Pegasus. With their Space Patrol periscope, they're observing Tirana's preparations for the coming attack upon the United Planets. Right now, the instrument is focused on a vast spaceport near the capital city of Tirana. Wow. There must be a hundred spaceships there, Commander. And all star drive jobs from the looks of them. That's just one spaceport. Maybe ten more on other planets with just as many ships. Well, how are we going to locate them all, sir? It would take months to, to search all 15 planets with just this one periscope. We can't hope to find out how many ships are going to attack. We'll be lucky if we can find out when the invasion starts. And the only warning we'll get is when we see some of those ships blast off. Then we'll go into star drive and return to the United Planets. That means the space patrol will get only a few minutes warning. I sure wish our space phone would work through hyperspace. Well, that wouldn't help much, Hank. Those ships went to star drive. They'd reach our solar system right behind our warning. Now, let me see if I can locate General Mognier's headquarters with the periscope. It's a building east of the spaceport, according to what we picked up from that spy of his while we were captured. Oh. Have we got the microfilm camera to the periscope? May be able to photograph some Turanian documents. Well, that won't do much good, sir. We can't read Turanian. No, but back on Terra, there are a couple of captured Turanian spies that can translate for us. Yeah, that's right. And the brain graph can tell us whether they're telling the truth or not. Elsewhere, in his headquarters on Tirana 7, capital planet of the enemy solar system, General Mognir, chief of the Tiranian intelligence section, goes over invasion plans with a spy, Kosurig, known to Buzz and Happy as Matthew Smead. I have just received word from Central Command that our task units on eight other planets are ready for embarkment. Then uh, we are waiting for the unit here on Tirana 7. Yes, Kosurig. The ships of the command unit are being loaded with supplies now. Look. Mark this date on the calendar, Kosor. This is the date of our attack on the United Planets. Yes, General. And uh, I trust I am being considered for a suitable command in the occupation forces? I'll consider that matter after our next campaign. Our next campaign? Yes. 
After the United Planets are under control, Rana will launch an offensive against Barco. What? Barco is a star just eight light years from our system. Its planets are inhabited and developed to a high degree in technology. Why haven't we attacked it before? Because we weren't sure we could conquer it. Latest reports, however, show that the people of Arkel are entirely peaceful. Despite their scientific advancement, they should be easier to defeat than the United Planet. I'll go over our plan in detail. Well, Commander, it's all on microfilm, but I don't see that it'll do us much good. It's too bad we couldn't hear what the General and Smead were talking about. It would be in Turanian language anyway, huh? Still, I've learned something important. You have, sir? What? In the periscope, we could see a chart of our solar system and the Turanian calendar. General Mognir pointed to a date two days off. Very likely, that's the date of the invasion. Two days? Well, that's more time than we expected. But... Hey, wait a minute. How do you know that was a calendar? I picked up a little Turanian during the past few weeks from the spies we've captured. Naturally, I can't translate any of their documents, but I know their number system, and I know how they measure time. That was a calendar. Mm. And we've got two days' warning. Not less than that. One day in Tirana 7 is much shorter than a 24-hour period in our solar system time. In fact, it's just a little more than six hours. Wow. Then two days, Tirana time is about 12 hours in our solar system. Right. But from watching General Mugnir at that star chart, we've got a pretty good idea where the attack will originate. Yeah, but he was pointing to some other part of space, a lot nearer to Tirana than our solar system. I noticed that. There's a star about eight light years from Tirana. If Mugnir was talking about it at this time, I'd say it was either an ally of Tirana or their next victim. Commander, look. Isn't that a spaceship in the viewscope? Yes, probably a Turanian patrol ship. It's a long way off. Not a cross vector. I don't think they've seen us yet. We'll increase velocity and go into star drive now. Hey, what's that? Get a directional fix in that signal. Yes, sir. Sounds like some sort of automatic code. Yes. Too simple for a message. Could be a warning or a sign that we've been picked up by a Turanian patrol. I don't think it's coming from that other ship, Commander. It seems to be coming from about 15 degrees off our starboard. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've got it fixed, sir. Is that distress signal is originating at 16.5 degrees off our present heading. I'll adjust the view scope, Hap. Uh, why do you call it a distress signal? Hmm? Gee, sir, I don't know. It just popped into my head, that's all. You may be right. Look at the starboard view scope. It's a meteor. Yes, look what's on it. A spaceship. A Turanian ship must have cracked up. And their space opponent is sending out an automatic signal. Mm, it could be. Take a look at that ship. Doesn't look like any Turanian spacecraft I've seen. It sure doesn't. Uh, and there are probably a lot of planetary-type ships in the Turanian system. Yeah. And that ship way back there at our rear. It's probably coming to rescue him. Maybe. That ship is on our vector, not the meteors. Well, anyway, it's no problem of ours, is it, sir? I mean, uh, even if we were perfectly safe, this isn't our solar system. No. No, it isn't. That ship on the meteor, I don't know why, but I'd swear it isn't a Turanian ship. Well, after all, if we tried to help, we'd probably be captured. And our first duty is to alert the United Planets about the attack. Isn't that right, sir? Sure. Sure, have that's fine. Well, even if it only took a few minutes, it's still too big a risk. Well, poor fellow. All alone in a meteor and in a strange solar system. How do you know he's all alone? In fact, how do you know anyone's alive after that crash? Obviously, it's an automatic signal. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Somehow I get the impression that... Well, we're pretty near up to star drive velocity, aren't we, Commander? Get two spacesuits out of the locker, Happy. Two spacesuits? We'll need them when we land on that meteor on the double hat. Yes, sir, Commander. After rapidly decelerating, Buzz changes vector and heads for the meteor. A few moments later, the star drive ship lands on a barren lump of rock near a damaged spaceship of strange design. In their spacesuits, Buzz and Happy are approaching the wreck. There's no sign of life, sir. Uh, oh. It's funny about that signal. Cut out just as we changed vector and headed for the media. The ship's pretty badly damaged, Commander. Yeah, there's a big hole in the hull. If anyone's in there, they'd better be wearing a spacesuit. Yeah. I don't see that other ship. Say, maybe they lost us when we changed vector. I hope so. All right, Hap, let's see if we can get the hatch open. Yes, sir. I hope it doesn't lock from inside. Commander, look. Lying there on the deck. Man, the space suit. If we're too late. He looks awfully pale. Now we can't do anything for him here. We'll carry him to our ship. 
Gently, Buzz and Happy lift the limp figure in the spacesuit and carry him to the control compartment of their own ship. Opening the face pieces of their own helmets, they examine the spacesuit of the stranger for a similar release catch. Hey, the spacesuit is certainly different from ours. How do we get his helmet open? I'll work on it, Happy. You check the view scope. See if that other ship is in sight. Yes, sir. Did you get a look at the controls of that other fellow's ship? He sure isn't from Toronto. No, and he sure picked a bad part of the galaxy to get wrecked in. Yeah, I'm getting it, Hap. I hope he breathes the same kind of air we do. If he doesn't, he's no worse off than he was in his own ship. Commander, we're on a spot. There's a ship heading straight for this meteor. Just a periscope, Hap. Focus it inside that ship. Hurry. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've got the helmet open. He's alive. His eyes are open. Thank you. Thank you. Smoking rockets, he speaks English. He's in pretty bad shape, Hap. I take care of him. You stand by to blast off and the fire space torpedoes at that ship. Yes, sir. Please, listen to me. I'm hurt. There, there's a medicine kit in my ship. I must have it. Oh, I'm finished. Commander, I've got the periscope focused inside that ship. And guess who's at the controls? Smead? Right. And General Mogul. <sighs> medicine in my ship. Get it, please. Hey, Commander. Smeet isn't close enough to use his null ray on us. If we blast off now, we can keep the meteor between us and that ship until we get up velocity again. Oh, no ray. If Smeet turns that on us, we're helpless. He's nearly within range, sir. Shall I blast off? The medicine kit. Please. He's nearly done for. Smeet reaching for the null ray control, sir. What are we going to do? We're going to save this man's life. Get the medicine kit. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. It's first and ten and goal to go. And man, oh man, you don't miss a play when you're appearing through the secret eye of your swell Space Patrol periscope. Yes, sir, gang, a periscope comes in mighty handy when you watch a football game or parade. You can use it to see over the heads of the crowds like I'm doing right now. It's a big, big 24 inches high, tapered special for wide-angle vision. A mirror on top, one on the bottom, too. Use it to spy on your Earth pals. The periscope has magic mirrors that let you see around corners and trees, over fences and bushes, but nobody can see you. And say, you and your gang will have a neat time putting your periscopes together. The Space Patrol periscope comes in an official Space Patrol envelope. Just follow directions. They're printed right on the envelope. And in minutes, you're set to start peering through your periscope. So, gang, send for yours today. This is the last time we can offer it. The terrific Space Patrol Periscope. Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Now, don't forget your 25 cents and your rice checks or wheat checks box top. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, Invasion from Tirana. Although they knew a Tiranian patrol ship was after them, Buzz and Happy landed on a small meteor, answering a distress call from a strange spaceship that had crashed. They removed a man in the spacesuit from the wreck bringing him to their own ship. To their surprise, the rescued man speaks English. Seriously injured, he begged them to bring a medicine kit from his ship. But unless Buzz and Abby blast off quickly, they'll soon be within range of the null ray of a Tyranian patrol ship now rushing toward the meteor. In the patrol ship, the spy Matthew Smead grins triumphantly as the meteor grows larger in the viewscope screen and the images of the two ships are outlined against the dark, jagged rock. We've got forty this time, General Mognier. He's been in the range of the null ray, and he's helpless. Why did he land on that meteor in the first place? He could have escaped into star drive in about a few minutes. Obviously, he was investigating that other ship. But that other ship isn't one of the United Planet ships. And it isn't one of ours. If that isn't one of our ships on the meteor, where is that from? I was just examining it, this sorry. And I do believe we're doubly in luck. That wrecked ship is from Barco. Barco? Our next target for Congress. Are you sure? I'm not possible. I haven't briefed myself yet on the characteristics of Barco's ship. But it keeps the general description. But I thought the ships from Barco stayed close to their home planet. Perhaps it's a spy ship. If so, it has met with the fate it deserves. However, this will give us a chance to study Barco equipment. Yes, Kasorik, we've netted a double prize this trip. 
Corey and the ship from Barco. As the Tyranian ship approaches closer to the meteor, Commander Corey does his best to make his injured guest comfortable while waiting for Happy to return with the medicine kit from the wrecked ship. I got it, Commander. Open the kit, Happy. Hold it so he can see the contents. Now raise your head a bit. There, can you see the medicine? Yes. Yes, thank you. It's that blue container. Oh, he's sure weak. He can hardly lift his hand. A heavy space, it isn't helping much. Yeah. This container, you mean? Yes. Open it. Put one capsule between my lips. Hurry. Please. But it's slipping fast. Here, my friend. You want some water with it? No. Just a capsule. It'll be all right in a moment. You just relax. We've got a little business to attend to. You're sure right, sir. The ship's getting closer every second. Come on, here. Let's fire a space torpedo. It's not too late. Line up a target. I'm on target, Commander. Okay, Hap. Fire one. Hey, we're too late. Smeed must have used the null ray on us. We try blasting off. If only our rockets will fire. I'm dead. Completely dead. May I help you, my friends? Wow, that was a quick recovery. He's walking. Yes, I'm all right now, thanks to you. Perhaps I should introduce myself. My name is Omar. I'm glad to know you, Omar. I'm Buzz Corey, and this is Cadet Happy. And right now we're in a tight jam. Tight jam? Oh, you mean a dangerous situation. Yeah, that's it, Omar. There are two men in that ship who are either going to blast us or land and take us captive. But why? They're from Tirana. They're planning to invade our planetary system many light years from here. A barbaric. You mean you don't know anything about the Tyranians? Where are you from? From Barkal, a system eight light years from here. Well, how does it happen you know our language? My mind is sensitive to your minds. Well, how do you happen to be in the Tyranian system? It was an accident. And it was only by a superhuman effort that I averted a fatal crash on that meteor. And if you hadn't come to help me... Tyranian so... agent Kasuri calling Commander Corey. Prepare to surrender, Corey. It's Smead. Answer me, Corey. This is Agent Kasuri, your old friend Matthew Smead. Acknowledge and I'll give you General Mognir's orders. I read you, Smead. For your information, I'm not interested in General Mognir's orders. There is nothing you can do about it now, Corey. We will land on a meteor and take you with us. And I warn you, any attempt to resist may prove fatal. Or sorry, out. See what we mean, Omra? Have you stopped to help me? Knowing you were in danger from this man? Well, it looks like our help didn't accomplish much. Might as well warn you, Omra, we're going to fight. And Sneed and General Book near land, this ship isn't going to be a very safe place for you. There's something else. I can't be sure, but I think your own planetary system is next on Tirana's list for conquest. But Barkal has done nothing to the Tyranians? Well, a lot that has to do with it. We didn't do anything to them either. Come with me to my ship. Your ship's wrecked. Still, if you've got weapons aboard, we can make a stand there. There isn't much time. Hurry. All right, Omar. Adjust your face piece, Happen. Let's go. In the damaged, airless hull of Omra's ship, the three men wearing spacesuits look through the nose port as the Tyranian ship approaches the meteor. Won't be long now, Omra. Let's have a look at those weapons and show us how to use them. I have no weapons aboard, Commander. What? Excuse me, my friends. There is a matter I must attend to. Well, gee, Commander, maybe you and I ought to go back to our ship. No, Speed and General Bogner will probably assume we're there. Maybe that'll give us a chance to take them by surprise. Omra, what good is that space phone going to do? Hey, it'll take that signal eight years to reach Varkol. Maybe Omra's space phone works through hyperspace, huh? Well, even so, Smeed and the General can finish us before a Varkol ship could get here. And from the way Omra talks, well, they couldn't fight one Tyranian ship, let alone a whole fleet. There's Smeed's ship. It's up to us, huh? What do we do? Wait till they get out of their ship and use the ray guns on them? It's the only thing we can do. They'll probably try to surprise us in our ship by entering through the cargo hatch. Yeah, that'll be a break. We can trap them inside. Yeah. Uh, one of us can guard the cargo hatch and the other one the main hatch. What's holding them up? I know. They probably picked up Omra's signal. And they know that we're in here. Omra, could you cut off that transmitter? All right, Commander. What were you trying to do, Omra? Uh, contact Happy, me. look. They're up to something. They're shining some sort of light on us. Oh, wow, what a glare. Don't look at it, Happy. Some kind of special ray. Drop to the deck. I can still see that light, even with my eyes shut. It's burning into my brain. Commander, 
Everything's turning black. We can work our way aft and get some shielding between us and that... I... I... It's no use, Commander. I... I can't move. I... <sighs> Under the effects of the mysterious ray, numbness creeps over the two space patrollers in Omra. Then, complete oblivion. The next thing Buzz and Happy are aware of is a rotating, rushing sound and a painful throbbing in their heads. All is blackness, except for a few pinpoints of light. The points become blurs, and then suddenly come into focus. Happy turns and finds Buzz lying beside him. Commander, can you hear me? Yes, Happy. We're in a ship, and we're spaceborne. Yes. It's our own star drive ship. We're alone in the control compartment. Oh, I never expected to wake up alive after that ray... I wonder how we got here. Maybe Omra had something to do with it. Well, how could he get us away from Smeed and General Mogan? Let's get to the controls and check our position. Oh, my head. Stay right where you are, both of you. Smeed. Kasuri, if you please. And you remember General Mognir? Yes, yes, I remember. And it's no pleasure. It will be even less pleasure before long, Cadet. You were right, Commander, about Parkball. Well, Omra, they took you along, too, I see. Yes, Corey. I want to thank you for saving Omra's life. His knowledge will be of great use to us when we attack his planet. Why have you got us in our ship? Well, it may be of use to us later. Uh, look out the side ports. Wow, a whole fleet of ships. Yes. Yeah. You are now a part of the Tyrannian task force. In a moment, the entire fleet will go into star drive simultaneously and emerge near the United Planet. Yeah, then we must have been unconscious for several hours. Yes, Cadet. You have awakened just in time to watch the destruction of your space patrol defenses. Taran, listen. That you should actually help Tarana conquer your united planet. I am very sorry. Save your sympathy for yourself, Omra. Perhaps after you see what we do to the united planet, you will persuade the people of Arco to surrender at once. What do you gain by this violence and conquest? You don't need these other planets for survival? The Chiranians have a greater destiny we must fulfill. We will not rest until we rule the entire galaxy. And obviously we are fitted for this role. Or we would not succeed as we have. Uh, there's the warning signal. The entire fleet is going into star drive. Get to the controls, Kusule. Yes, General. Now, Corey, you and the cadet are about to have a dramatic experience. In a few moments you will see your entire united planet in their last hour of freedom. And then our attack will begin. Go to the star drive. Yes, General. What's the matter, Kasorik? Go to the star drive, I say. Something is wrong. It's just Corey's ship. Make him fix it. Come on, Corey. Fix the star drive. We got to keep up with the rest of the task force. Me, this is your operation. You fix it. Don't argue, Corey. Prepare that star drive. The General of the Intelligence Section, I've got to be with the rest of the fleet. If you will look through the viewports, General, you will notice that you are with the fleet. I was wrong. The ships are still there. They're still in the rocket drive. Yes, General. At this rate, you should arrive at Commander Corey's solar system in about three centuries. Three centuries? Omra, what are you talking about? Look through the nose port, high above your fleet. Why, open rockets. Look at that ship. What a monster. It's not a Tyrannian ship. Where did it come from? It is a ship from Barkal. From Barkal? Then your message got through. Yes, Commander. That ship is sending out radiations that cut off every star drive in the Turanian fleet. That's easily fixed. Put on the space phone, Kusorek. I'll order the fleet to blast that Barkal ship to pieces. Every weapon you have is useless, General. There will be no attack. You might as well order your fleet to return to their Turanian bases. Your lick, General. Not fine. The three are still our captains. And you'll pay for wrecking our plans. Kasorik, destroy that! Hat gets me. Yes, sir. Never mind, Omra. We can handle it. All right, Smeed. Mugnir. Get your hands up. I don't know what these weapons of yours will do, but if you want me to find out, just start something. General, don't move. Please. Don't worry, Smeed. He won't move. The commander knocked him cold. Commander... Your planets are safe from attack by Tirana from now on. That Barkal ship will destroy every star drive in the fleet. No Tirana ship can ever invade another solar system again. Hey, that's wonderful, Omra. Hey, but wait. How are we going to get back to Terra? The Barkal ship won't completely destroy the star drive units until I give the word. After you return home. Will you take me to that big ship? <laughs> 
please. Of course. What about Mognir and Sneed? I'll take care of them if you like. I'll return them to their home planet. They will never bother you nor anyone else again. Are you going to punish them? Punish them? Punish? That is a word that has no meaning in the Barkhall language. Oh. Well, let's see. It means... Uh, it doesn't matter, Harry. I... Oma has completely stopped all Turanian conquest. But I couldn't have done it if you hadn't sacrificed your own safety to help me. I hope your people and mine will always be friends. I'm sure we will be, Omra. Sure, Omra. And I, I think I can explain punishment. Uh, it's what you're doing to Smeed and General Mognir. I still don't understand. You're fixing them so they'll never see anyone but their own kind. That's real punishment. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, Hap, what's all the commotion around the Space Patrol bulletin board? It's a so crowd that I couldn't get up close enough to see. I don't know, Captain. Hey, let's peer through our periscopes. Yeah, right over the heads of the crowd. Good idea. Okay, now, what does it say? Smoke and rockets. The message reads, Last call for the Space Patrol periscope. Hey, that's right, too. Space Patrollers, this is the last time we can tell you about it. Go ahead, Captain. Tell them. A pleasure, Cadet. Gang, this is an honest-to-goodness periscope with magic mirrors. One on top, one on the bottom. Through them, you see around corners and over fences, around trees and over bushes, but nobody can see you. Yes, you see without being seen, and it's big, 24 inches high, tapered special for wide-angle vision. There's a special identification chart printed right on it, pictures of the citizens of all the major planets. Jumpin' Jupiter, you're going to have lots of fun playing secret space agent or Earth spy with a space patrol periscope, but remember, this is the last time that we can make this terrific offer. So space patrollers right away today send our rice checks. Or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents and a rice checks or wheat checks box top. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Bite sized checks taste good to me. Bite sized checks. Wheat checks, rice checks. Get your checkerboard cereal today. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have just rescued two men from a damaged space freighter. Right now in their spacesuits, they're helping the two men through the airlock into their patrol ship. Close the hatch, Hap. Yes, sir. Raise our base pieces now. The cadet will take you back aft, man. Thanks. Have that other fellow's injured. Better hold him. Right, Commander. I've got something in this box that'll make him feel better. Oh, a uh, first aid kit, huh? Not quite. But if you don't get your hands up, you'll need more than a first aid kit. Commander, it's a blast gun. They're taking over the ship, Corey. Do as you're told and you'll stay alive. Be sure to be with us next week for the thrilling story, The Voice from the Future, when Nestle's Chocolate presents... Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Baylor Kovach. Dick Tufeld speaking. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from...